eldritch liches, hover your way into the stinky dragon, drink up our latest java, few and far realm between. It's a mixture of espresso, white chocolate whisper sauce, parasitic poison, topped with tentacle whipped cream. One swig of the swill and you won't be able to legendary resist the rest. Previously, our adventurers arrived in the plain of Australia thanks to Jacques. Matid's mentor trained them in the monastic methods of self-defense, cultivation, and planar arts. Now the party returns to the material plane to ascertain alchemical secrets and conquer the coven. Grab a guzzler and let's get back to this gassy goss. Hello everyone, I'm Gustavo Sorolla, dungeon master of our putrid party. I'm gonna hit our four players with an arrow. Ah, ah, putrid is me. I send it back. <laughs> oh, ow. I take a... Uh, you rolling dice? Yeah. <laughs> I take four points of damage. Ow. Guys, that means you should have to answer the, the arrow question too. <laughs> Well, speaking of arrows, if you were in a rock band, which instrument would you play? I presume uh, your characters. If your if your character was in a rock band, which instrument would they play? This is the most easy and obvious one for me, so I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I am Barbara Dunkelman, and I play Elga von Brath, the half Hi, elf. Hello, John. <laughs> I play the half elf vampire barbarian, level six. Woo! Currently, not quite at bat level yet. But I think if Elgo was in the rock band, the obvious answer would be the drums because Elgo smash <laughs> the drums. El I Elga has animal an animal energy. No, animal like from the Muppets. Yeah, you know, like yeah. like shredding an axe. Oh, she could do that too. I was just thinking, smashing, 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 just making a lot of boom boom now noises and stuff like that. You know. Mm, mm. That tracks. Although I, the sh the visualization of Elga, tiny little Elga, on like. A guitar, just like that's what I was thinking. Because oh, you tiny yellow guy at a drum set is also great, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I go both ways. She does both. Oh, that's a that's a combo you rarely see in bands nowadays. Is the guitar <laughs> guitarist slash drummer? She picks up where people need her the most. She's a regular mm. Phil Collins. <laughs> do -do 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 -do. I'll go next. Hey there, it's Chip Haney, uh, Tiefling Rogue Six, standing by. Uh, I stole that <laughs> from Barbara. Yeah, Wait, I, was, I, I was getting to it, John. <laughs> I just I want to make sure people know it. that I want people to know who you are because I know who you know are. Me. It's, it's they the all best know thing me. In my it's life. your good friend, Blaine. Oh, hi, I like Blaine. Blaine. Hi there. Hi, Blaine. Hey there. So I think it's obvious that Chip Haney, you know, he's just, uh, he wears so many hats. So he'd play so many instruments. So I'd have one of them big old, you know, one man band outfits, you know, like where Dick I, Van Dyke and, and Mary Poppins, <laughs> where I'd, I'd push my leg and it plays a drum and then I'm playing a banjo and I got a kazoo up in my mouth and then I'm, you know, bringing my abductors together and, or my adductors together and then it's making a cymbal clap. I think that'd be real fun. Uh, also, really quick, uh, when I was looking for what the name of that instrument is called, because I, I thought that there would be a name for that, one of the Google searches is, uh, what is the most masculine <laughs> instrument? There's some really sad people out there. Oh, yeah. I what is the most anything. masculine? What's it listed as? Uh, let, me, let me go back. I didn't even click on it because I was like, I just, that's so sad. Oh, it's, it's obviously the guitar drums. It's the mandolin. Oh. oh. Mateed, uh inspiration died. <laughs> really? That was a very coordinated, oh. oh. <laughs> Masculinity are attributed to trumpets, trombones, and percussions. All right. They like to blow it. <laughs> typical, <laughs> typical man, am I right? It depends on who you ask. Chorus is electric guitar and drums. <laughs> Barney, Barney's like, I play the electric guitar and drums. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the contraption you're talking about, the chip would play. I think that's just called one man band, isn't it? I, I assume so. Yeah. Is it because men are mostly known for having like better lung capacity or something? Like, is that why it's a lot of like those? Well, I think in in the regards to like an orchestra or like a band, like a big band. Yeah. Like brass instruments, maybe I don't know. Whereas like the violin is maybe more like feminine. I, I, like feel, I feel like it's like fingers. It's like like a flute requires like more dexterity and like precision. And then a man's just like, push down this, burr, blow burr, this burr. trombone. <laughs> it's a piccolo in my book. 
<laughs> All right, who's next? Let's keep this ball going. You want to go, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I, I just found an instrument, and it's ridiculous looking. I'm trying to find the name of the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> what I instrument? Don't know. Wait, wait, wait! I now let's play a game here. Barbara Blaine Gus. What instrument is Chris looking at right now? I'm gonna guess it's an accordion. He doesn't know what an accordion he is. Does, he doesn't know what an accordion no, is. I okay. know what an accordion is. I'm gonna guess it's one of those like like 32 string uh, like weird guitar things that are like beautiful sounding. Trixie Mattel, one of my favorite drag queens, plays one. Barbara. Barbara? I'm going to guess that it's like a harpsichord or something of that sort. Mm. I think he's looking at something really weird, like a theremin or something. I Ooh. don't know what that is. I don't have anything to do with Scientology. Uh, but I posted a picture of it oh. <laughs> in, in, in Slack. Oh, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a medieval <laughs> instrument. That's so The cool. Baroque the Orbo. Wait, say that all without pausing? Baroque the Orbo. Okay, so the that's orbo. one word. Now say it as Barney because Barney plays it. Broke three elbow. I'm there you Kristen go. Maris, and I play Barney Barney. <laughs> he's he's the, doing it. He's the, doing it in the Barney the level, voice. <laughs> the level six. Uh, a human cleric. I'm Kristen Maris. <laughs> <laughs> the instrument looks like something that Bart would have bought if he was going through a midlife crisis. Uh, yeah. Just like trying to compensate like a little bit. eight feet long. I also just want to point out that the question was what instrument you would play in a rock band. And this <laughs> is the instrument that you envision being in a rock band. We have well, the they, didn't band. Say, they didn't say what era of, of, yeah. Yeah. of rock music. True? Classical yeah. rock. Yeah, Baroque rock music. It, it rock. looks like it's like an eight foot guitar or yeah. uh, acoustic guitar with like double strings like a giant lute i, I would yeah, say it looks like like a, like a giant sitar almost like upright a bit sitarish yeah 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 have you ever heard of bjork that's a rock <laughs> band <laughs> okay so so barney plays the baroque th th i don't think i don't even know what you said <laughs> they're th 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 robo uh, the Baroque the Orbo. Duh. Okay, I don't know what it is either. I don't know. I I I just know visually. I'm like that's that's medieval. That's not uh, modern. This is a D and D podcast. Yeah, medieval, I, like I think it's appropriate. Matid, what would what would Matid play? How about oh, that? Oh yeah, my name is John Reisinger, and I play Matid Confucius, Eric Cochrane, Ghost Monk. And as a as a musician, I actually I, I've I've recently with the development of uh, my new abilities i have been able to uh, learn a new instrument actually oh. what i do Ooh. is i cast arms of the astral self and i play uh the organ and i play all the parts of the Ooh. organ i was gonna say all the organ once. for that's, you that's so appropriate for this podcast too yeah yeah, yeah. very I, I, I love uh, big fan of, of michael crawford I was going to say it was going to be a flute because the flutes always remind me of birds. They're always like, yeah. <laughs> this is a, a joke for Gus and Gus only in the garden of Eden. Yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> I feel like Gus's uh, DM character would play like a theremin because this is like a spooky, like, <laughs> yeah, but Chris doesn't know what that is. Chris, you know, you know, the sound no. at the beginning of the old Star Trek theme song <laughs> or Doctor Who. Or what about yeah. or uh, good Who. vibrations by the Beach Boys? Yeah, there you okay. Go. It's this weird instrument that it just it you actually just use your hands in the air and it and there's a little frequency rod that like registers where your hands are and it makes that weird sound. That's magic. A bit. You know what? You might you might be right there, Chris. Or science, but what is science that we can't explain but magic? Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Was that yeah. the vision? I'm the first person to say something like that ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having fun, guys. Let's just keep talking about this. Forget the <laughs> All right, Jack pulls out a sky trap from his robes, and the parchment becomes sparkling dust, and he blows the cloud towards you all. Wait, did we want to? Too late. The shower, <laughs> the shower of sparkles oh, sizzles across oh, your spiritual selves, and soon your spirits soar back to the material plane, straight into your bodies in the abandoned schoolhouse. <laughs> As you all gather. <laughs> As you all gather your bearings, you realize that your bodies have been revitalized, no doubt thanks to Jacques, uh, or Jack. Everyone, you can now mark a long rest on your yes. character sheets. Yes. Looks like we made it. Can we go up a level? No. Okay. <laughs> Footsteps creak on the floorboards behind you, and a disheveled alchemist steps forward, the weathered lines across his face sunken in more than ever. I believe it's time I told you the tale of me and my other personality, Lewis. Oh, you look sleepy. 
<laughs> Good start. Okay, go ahead. We're waiting. Just a little peek behind the damn screen. Whenever we record at home, we're recording at home this episode. For some reason, I can't scroll down in Acrobat using the scroll wheel on my mouse because if I scroll down even once, it goes to the end of the document. Ah. So if you hear me pause sometimes, it's because I'm moving my mouse to the scroll bar at the edge and then going down one page and then continuing to read. That's where Chris fills in the blanks the by going, page. you look tired. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was born with a condition and I possess two personalities, Robert and Lewis. Oh. <laughs> That's all Barney needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> acting, acting, everybody. That's how you do it. Chris wins today. Oh, I love it. I, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big coffee. You broke me, Chris. You broke. You broke me. Right. Chris, um, Chris is over caffeinated. Everybody, Chris is over caffeinated. <laughs> Gird your loins. We're in for one today. <laughs> well, I'm in possession of my faculties as Robert. I'm somewhat moderate and intellectual, while my alternate personality, Lewis, can be quite brute and fiendish with insatiable proclivities. However, due to my condition, it was difficult to maintain any type of regular job. So I ended up making a not so savory deal with an underground organization in exchange for the promise of a cure of my condition. Oh. That organization, as you have figured out, is talent. Oh. Oh, I guess we didn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robert, is this condition something you were born with? Like maybe it's Maybelline or were yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know if this is like chemically on set like an experiment gone wrong. I was born with it and I've had to deal with it for a long time. The head of Talon is the Coven, and the Coven deceived me. Instead of giving me a cure for my condition, they gave me a curse which turned Lewis into a monster. Oh. Why would they want to do that? That is beyond my understanding. I trusted that they would give me a cure, but perhaps they wanted to try to harness Lewis's power and energy for their ends. Do Lewis and Robert, you're, you uh, have two different like directions in life? Like does Lewis actively want to like hamstring Robert so like he would work with the coven willingly or do they have some sort of power over him? Not necessarily. It was even less possible to deal with Lewis after the curse was placed on me. So perhaps they sought to control him with his reduced faculties. Ah. Oh. I fled from Talon in search for a cure, not only for my condition, but for the curse as well, taking any odd jobs I could. Eventually, I found a janitorial position at Lofton College where I met Lorenzo Wolfman. Wolfman took pity on me, and together we worked to develop the Fair Asylum. There, I was able to brew a daily curative concoction that helped me keep my symptoms in check. Mm. However, despite all the care I took in trying to remain anonymous, Talon finally caught up with me, thanks to their newly formed alliance with Eddie. Ooh. Now, does Robert's wife, your wife, Frank, Frank Esca, did, did, do they know about Lewis? What's their relationship like? Yes, Francesca is aware of Lewis. However, thanks to my daily brood concoction, she does not typically have to deal with Lewis. So I'm able to keep Lewis, my condition, and the curse in check. How, how about your boy? Is Lewis, little, little baby, uh, what was his name? It's not Henry. Robert. Henry. Is it a little baby Henry? We dropped the H because of Mateed. Uh, does Henry know about Lewis? Have they Henry. met? Henry is unaware. I've worked very diligently to keep him unaware of Lewis's existence. If you were able to work with uh, the Wolfman in order to create curative means to keep Lewis at bay, why was Lewis out uh, and about in Paris as of recently? I've been away from the Fair Asylum, unable to brew my daily curative. Ah. I did have some curative with me. However, I have been having to ration it out more and more as we spend more time away from Atra City. I was on my way back to Atra City in order to procure more of that curative, but I don't remember what happened. We must have been ambushed. Weren't you? You were on the train, weren't you? I remember I was traveling via camel with my family back to Atro City, but I don't recall how I ended up here in Parish. Everything is just kind of blank. Oh, he wasn't on the train. Weezer was on the train. Hey, Robert. Correct, correct. Hey, Robert. 
Does Henry have your disease? Have you has Hen Henry displayed any signs of having dual personalities, perhaps? Henry is at an age where we would know if he had it by now, and he has not shown any symptoms. As far as we can tell, the condition is not hereditary. Mm. So we don't expect Henry will experience any symptoms like this. Okay. What a precocious young boy. Very precocious. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Mr. Alchemist. Is the potion you use to keep Lewis at bay, maybe it's similar or the same potion that the wolfman would take to keep her wolf uh, look kind of at bay as well? That's a very astute question, Elga. It's not the same kind of potion, but they are similar in their goals and composition, but they are not the same. Okay. Alchemist, I got a real important question. This might be a real, real doorbuster here. I got a rash on my elbow. Can you prescribe me some sort of a cream? <laughs> a little off topic, but it's still very relevant to you and your profession. He uh, looks at your elbow and says, That's not a rash. That's a laceration. Oh. Whoop. You've been cut on your elbow. Oh, okay. Just wash it and keep it clean. Got it. Okie dokie. Becky. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that's funny. That's D&D. That's, that's, that's improv. Oh, oh, okay. I like it. That's showbiz, baby. Ah. Well, so, Robert... I mean, what are the next steps? Obviously, you're being sought after by Talon, and I don't know how much we can trust you because you could turn into Lewis. I mean, can we? It was what's the next mission? Do we got to get you some more of the 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 drinky drink that stops you from becoming Lewis, or what? I think the most prudent step at this point is to head back to Parish swiftly because I fear that Eddie and Talon may be looking to take over the city and expand the holdings of the cup. Mm. Oh, mm. so. When you turn into Lewis, you're a big troll. Giant, frost giant. Giant troll, frost giant. Yes. But, <laughs> so, so that's the only time, that's the only time we've seen you like that? That one time? I have no memory. Oh, that's right. You would have to tell me if you saw me as Lewis. <laughs> I like the it's way It's only that been the one time. I, I just have to appreciate the way that Chris in, in, incorporates information into what he's already saying. Like, you could say, like, oh, yeah, you know, the red thing. And th someone says the blue thing. And he goes, the red, blue thing. You know, that blue thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, roll me a wisdom check, uh, Barney. Uh, he's, a, he's a medical marvel, that Chris Damaris. I love him. 16. Not bad. So... You remember that you have seen Lewis more than once. You not oh. only saw him outside of the tavern, but you were engaged in, in combat with him under the ice dome when you were at Talon HQ yeah. uh, before you escaped with him. Where those hags were just staring at us, being weird about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least one Correct. was staring. One was staring at us. This might be less to Robert and more of just a, I guess, wisdom check for Chip. Is this a common affliction? that happens in grotesque, the the, the dual personalities. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's call it a wisdom check. Wisdom. Oh, that's a 10. <laughs> you don't think you've ever heard of anyone else having a condition like this throughout your life and experiences? My guards up, but you know, it could be any one of us. It could be, could be Barney. You could be two personalities. What? Yeah, I think I only have one. Yes, his one very alive personality. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give a knowing look. I don't know what you mean by that. Stinker begins licking his paws. <laughs> his bones, you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, his little bony paws. He's hey, Mateed. Mateed, how, how are you doing? You, you know, you just you just ran in with Jacques. Uh, you doing okay? You know, Jacques skimpered off, and you know, are you, how, how you how you going for like the the, the most. Like I'm kind of scared, embrace. <laughs> right? I grab your shoulder, but and I, I don't know if that's the vibe. Hey, 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 pal! That's, that's that, every hug for me. <laughs> that's, 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 the, that's the hell I live with. Don't know the vibe. I feel like Matid would feel your tension and then do like the bird, just head turn around, look at you kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the quite... reach out for the pat on the shoulder then becomes like a, a, a shoulder rub, but then a, a pet. And then I'm like, oh, no, no, I've committed. <laughs> Um, oh. I, I, I'm, I'm quite all right. Uh, yes, uh, that was quite a lot to learn about in my, in my past, uh, but uh, I feel like we, uh, I came out a better person. You know, every, every experience is an opportunity for yeah. learning. Yeah. I always appreciate that. Yeah, good. 
Good. Are you okay? okay? Uh, you oh, seem I'm... you seem quite tense. Ah, I'm great. I'm good. Yes, We're good. Is, is, you all right? Oh yeah. Can I have a okay. hug? <laughs> Are you guys stalling before we continue to figure yeah. out what's going on here? <laughs> uh, Elga, I think uh, Chip needs a hug. Okay. <laughs> Are we doing hugs? <laughs> I'm. I am not quite. I'm not quite an hugger. Okay, well, I let's I uh, I'm gonna roll for initiative. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a hug with Elga, and then I'm gonna pull in Barney, and then I'm gonna extend an arm, just outreach to my team if they want it, and then I'm gonna just bring a leg out and welcome in Stinker. Oh, Elga is gonna counter your hug by letting you come in for the hug. She's gonna swoop around you and jump on your back and okay. start strangling you cool. like, a, <laughs> like a wrestling move. That's great. <laughs> Barney is just gonna really slowly, just like you go in for the hug, but at like a 10% speed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, just open arms <laughs> waiting. Uh, Didn't I give you a hug last episode? Did you? I think I phased through you and then gave a hug, didn't oh, I? Oh, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Total power okay. move. Hey, Robert, Beautiful. you went in on this? <laughs> uh, sure. Robert looks kind of weak, kind of tired, but he hobbles over. He could. He looks like he could use a good. You hug. look like you could use some magic food. Restore some HP. Do you need? Do you need? Do you need uh, d- d- uh, uh, some? I could do a uh, cast sleep on you. Make you go to sleep. Take a nap. Or we could ask him if him turning into Lewis affects his health at all or does anything each time it happens. Oh, that's a good question. Or he could, I just, okay. Or he sleep. could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we have no time. We must make haste and get back to Paris and warn them. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Chris was unhappy with his own decision there. He went sleep and then face palmed himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, the curse is quite exhausting. It does take a lot of energy out of me. But like I said, we must return to Parish. It is still unclear why Eddie is involved with Talon. With my interactions with Talon and the Coven, I have learned that the Coven is most strong when all three hags are together. Mm-hmm. So when we face them, we need to do our best to split them apart. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm actually confused because didn't one of the hags help us get us. out of the Talon headquarters? Yeah, Chivy. I have no memory of it. Oh. oh, then this is information for you. One of them helped us. It seems to be a nicer hag. It's, uh, it was quite lovely. It, they got us out of the ice dome. It was wonderful. Yeah. Did she come with us? Where is she? Well, she she turned Lewis to help us and then shooed us away. She had influence over Lewis. So maybe she knows you. Hmm. This is a very interesting development indeed. Okay. Oh, uh, also real quick. What what triggers the Lewis the transformation? What what do we need? To, what are some warning signs so that we know when he's coming? Anger brings out the beast that is Lewis. Oh, okay. Oh. So gang, whenever whenever it gets a little tense for Robert, we're gonna go in. We're gonna get him a group hug. No, we're gonna whisper uh, uh, words of affirmation into Robert's ears, bombarding him with good vibes. Okay. And I'm okay. gonna get him uh, the best shoulder massage you could ever you could ever imagine. We're just gonna surround him by love, suffocate him with love, so that he doesn't transform into Lewis. All right, gang. <laughs> so we need to go to Paris. <laughs> Perhaps we should uh, abscond as time is of the essence. Yes. Uh, or take a nap. You find you could take a nap, and then we are going to go to Paris. We will catch up oh. with you later, Bunny. <laughs> Bunny, Bunny uh, if you want to take back, a nap. You fall- oh, sorry. Go ahead, Delga. I was gonna offer the same thing as you, Chip. It looks like we have the same man. I said if Barney wants to take a nap, I just hold him like a little baby in my arms. Two peas in a pod. We'll 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 go back and forth. If your arms get tired, I'll carry them. They like, won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you could just okay. piggyback him while he sleeps. Oh, that sounds lovely. And, and I can't can can Barney get <laughs> look his arms. You like put a blanket uh, on sure. top of you. <laughs> Like he points at himself and goes, sleep. (laughs) 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 Oh, wouldn't that be nice? So yeah, you all are back inside that schoolhouse you were in previously. It's about 50 feet by 70 feet. It's, you know, it's still overrun with frost and ivy. There's uh, two rows of topple desks, wooden shelves along the east wall. And you all have reappeared where you were previously by the large table and chalkboard at the northern end, which is kind of the back of the room. And this is the position that the hag, by the name of... Katrina. Nope. 
that's Katrina was the name of the lady and then turned into what hag? Yeah. She uh, turned uh, into Shirak. Shirak. Shirak left with the headless horseman. Like like yes. poured it away. Yes. So feel like trying to read into why Gus was so descriptive of this room. Is there something we should be doing in this room? Oh, it's I, I'm just resetting the scene. Okay. Okay. Now I was just gonna ask when we arrived in this room, I don't know if we had time to even investigate anything or like look around at all. Barney did detect magic, which led us to checking out this part of the room, the front of the room. And that was where Francesca was behind the desk over Headless Horseman. Katrina. Katrina. Ah, names are fun. Uh, Katrina was that. So yes, we really didn't do a lot of investigation. If uh, our little investigative barbarian wants to do some, that might be good. And it said something on the, I remember it said something on the chalkboard that we had looked at. It was names of the boys. Correct. There were names on the chalkboard. Right. Okay. And uh, uh, Ichabod was on there. It was Andreen, Braun, Hans, Knickerbobber, and Ichabob Crane. Knickerbocker. 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 Yeah. Knickerbocker, Baltus, and Ichabod Crane. Baltus. I don't remember any of that. It sounds like you guys are summoning some like <laughs> ancient god. <laughs> it was just, it was just we're, names. We're activating was the just Winter Soldier. On the chalkboard. Yeah. I don't know. Is there something we can do to just do one, a, a quick check of the room? Can we, can we, uh, perhaps before we leave, we should all um, just uh, see if we left anything around here. You know, was when you're leaving a hotel room, you check to make sure you didn't leave anything. There. Maybe we do that real quick. I, I'm going to check the teacher's desk to see if there's any Tamagotchis or Pokemans. You know, that's where they put them whenever they take them from the kiddos. Does that mean if you find anything else other than Tamagotchis or, or Pokemans, you're going to ignore it because you're only looking for those things? Yeah, I'm still looking for a first edition Charizard, you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> Likelihood is low, but these teachers, they don't know what gold they got on their hands, you know? <laughs> Beyblades, you know? Uh, other toys, yo-yos, Duncan yo-yos. My gosh. Yeah. Misty Mountain Dice, please sponsor us. Uh, you know? <laughs> uh, I will check the desk. No, they, they would know what gold they have on their hands if a teacher confiscated Misty Mountain Dice. Yeah, right. a quality product that uh, any teacher materials. would want to pocket for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, John. Did you say uh, uh, I'll, Matita I'll, was checking I'll the desk? I'll check the desk. You said there's rows of desks. I will check the desks. All right. Does anybody else want to do any in investigative work? Oh, I checked the teacher desk. Yeah, yeah. I will look. If, 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 I'll go if you want to carry. <laughs> no, I'm asleep. <laughs> I'll look around Barney. as well with Barney in my arms. Okay. Okay. Is there a specific place you want to look? Um. Well, that's the large table is the one that Blaine is looking at. And then Matita's Correct. Look, or sorry, Chip. And then Matita's looking at the rows of desks. So I'll look at the shelves. There we okay, go. great. I'm going to do Chip, Matita, Elga, because that's the order everyone set it in. Okay. Chip, go ahead and I guess make a, let's call it a investigation check. Nat 20. Ooh. Oh, I'm gonna. I better be finding some pogs, some yak backs, <laughs> some you know, some 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 homies with a Z. So the the, the large table's pretty cluttered. There's like some sand, rose petals, a dead cricket. It's just I don't know, weird. It's just kind of all overrun. Okay, make me an Arcana check, Chip. Mm. All right. Any pog slammers? Anything good? Sixteen. These look really familiar to you because you saw Barney use similar reagents not that long ago. This is the material components for a sleep spell. Ah. Oh. So probably, okay, gang, I found stuff for a sleep spell. It, if I had to take a guess, it was probably to put the Headless Horseman to sleep from uh, Katrina, whatever her name is. That's my guess. Maybe. So was the Headless Horseman uh, asleep when we got here? I think they were incapacitated before they were turned. I don't know. I that guy okay. ain't no magic guy. I'm just a simple knife guy, you know? When you all first walked in, the Headless Horseman was laying down on the ground okay. with Katrina over his body. Yeah. Okay. Knife guy's finished okay. last. Mateed. Yeah, like I said, there's two rows of four desks, so there's eight total. Make me an investigation check. It's a 10. Yeah, it's, uh, it seems like it's mostly a lot of trash. You're able to find a broken jar of ink in uh, one of the desks. Uh, okay. Maybe an old school supply? Okay. Uh, nothing here. Elga. Hello. So there's four rows of wooden shelves that are lining the eastern wall. They're completely intact and thoroughly kept. On each shelf are glass bowled cases housing decapitated humanoid heads of various species. There's about two on each set shelf, more or less. Go ahead and make me an investigation check. With advantage? Yes, because you can get up close on this. Okay, 17. 
you notice, you know, as you're kind of looking at it, you notice the third and last shelf are missing a head. And you also spot claw marks along the wooden shelving in that area. And on top of that, you notice a trail of broken glass along the floor leading toward the table at the back of the classroom over where Chip is. And that's where the Headless Horseman was. Correct. So is this like a where he got jumped, I guess? Uh, or like they took a head from the shelf to put on him or something like that? You said two jars were missing, right? Correct. When we saw the Headless Horseman mm-hmm. at the entrance of Parish. Was the horseman, horseman headless or did they have like a, a pumpkin or anything like that? I don't remember the description. I, I like the idea of a horsewoman. 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 Yeah, the, the horseman uh, was in possession of a head at that time. What was the head? The head at that time was a pumpkin head. A pumpkin head. And then when we fought the horseman in this classroom, what did he look like? It was an apple. It looked very strange, <laughs> not proportional. <laughs> <laughs> a partial <laughs> just a little, a little apple instead of a full pumpkin it was a gourd yeah. just like a, yeah. it looks like a pumpkin just like way too small not right day. at all he's having a bad day <laughs> so then when you uh, encountered the horseman here in the classroom yeah Katrina slash Chirac had pulled out a humanoid head. It was. It seemed like I believe I said was using it to maybe control him. They they were they were they were holding that. They were palming that thing. It was like something that you were describing. I remember during the encounter. Correct. The horseman himself. Did he still have his pumpkin head at the time? Yes. Okay. So okay. maybe that was his old head that she was Cindy. somehow manipulating him and took from the jar. Yeah, I don't know why it's in here. Could we recall if the hags have claws? Yes. Yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I worded it in a weird recall. way. <laughs> All right. We can recall. Sorry, yes, they do. Oh, no. So I think that's a good theory that the hag, that Chirac took the head from the jar. And since the glass leads to the table where they were doing that spell on Ichabod mm. and then and then did go, took control of him. I would think. But there's two missing, which means yeah. there's another head in play here. Interesting. Can I wake up? Okay, <laughs> Chris, wants up. To, Chris wants to play. <laughs> okay, Barney, I'm putting you down now. Good morning, Barney. Wakey, wakey. What's Chris going to do? This place looks just like the place we left. <laughs> we have not gone anywhere. We've been investigating this classroom. Oh. We're on the okay. hunt for uh, <laughs> uh, an Ed. Uh, we are missing one. Oh, there's a bunch in those jars right over there. Let's go look at those. Oh, I'm so glad you were asleep this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can, can, can I take a head? Do you say, can you take a head? Yeah, like one of the heads. A jars. Sure, why not? All right, which one? Well, uh, you tell me. There's, there's just all different kinds of humanoid heads. Uh, is there a specific kind of humanoid you're looking for? I mean, there's <laughs> elves, <laughs> teethling, What are you in the humans. market for there, Barney? What kind of head? I don't know. Take a <laughs> head. head. That looks nice. <laughs> In case the headless horseman need, needs a new one. All right. Uh, yeah, you can take a human head if you want. This one looks nice. <laughs> what's okay. what's your 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 weight for your inventory? <laughs> I wonder. The human head's like human thirty head something weighs pounds. Eight pounds. What? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's more like ten to twelve, is it not? What movie is that from? Uh, 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 Jerry, uh, Jerry Maguire. Maguire. Jerry Maguire. I, I'm trying to weigh my own head, but it's hard because it's connected to my spine. <laughs> <laughs> the average human head weighs 10 to 11 pounds. Hey. Okay. I'm pretty sure Chris is at least 30. I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wrinkly brain up in there. <laughs> um, do we feel like we have uh, exhausted this classroom and we might want to add to Parish? I'm just going to look around one more time. Game Boy Colors, Mighty Max, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, anything. I don't think you're going to find what you're looking for. I think we should probably head out. No okay, pun intended. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, fine. We leave. We go to. We head to Parish. <laughs> I will say that again. We should head out. No pun intended. There you go. Uh, oh. If you want, you can take the items from the desk that you did find. Chip, that's up to you. Uh, Barney, do you need any material components for sleep? It's like sure. a cricket. Okay, there you go. I throw it out. <laughs> there you go. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, while you're picking all that up and giving it to Barney, you know, the sand moves aside and you find a blue ice white dragon. Uh, for some garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I slipped that into my bum bag of holding. It's an that's, actual that's dragon, good. though. That's, that's good. That's good. Yo, what's up, little stinkers? It's it's me, Barbara. Hello. Talking to you directly in your eardrums. January is a very, very important month for us because it's stinkuary. 
not just important for us, but also for you guys. So this show, we talk about it all the time. It would not be possible without your patronage, which is why all month long, we will be raising awareness around our subscription service, which is called First. Uh, it puts you guys in the audience first. That's why it's called First. Fun little uh, fun fact for you guys. Every time someone supports Tales from the Stinky Dragon with First, they contribute to keeping the podcast going and also the creation of new Stinky Dragon content. Who doesn't want new stuff? More stuff. It's awesome. We're also currently seeing how many subscribers and merch sales we could raise in the month of January so that we could do all the cool and fun stuff we want to make for you guys throughout the year. We'll be able to create some new awesome stuff in 2024, including exclusive adventures run by the players, John, Blaine, myself, maybe Chris again. Don't know why anyone would want Chris to do that again. Definitely not us. Uh, So uh, why don't you guys torture us and buy a first membership? (laughs) Second win for uh, our Infinite campaign, perhaps. If you guys are familiar with the Infinite campaign, doing second win for that. First only exclusive merch, perhaps. Maybe an Infinite campaign source book. Ooh, ooh la la. And that's just the future. But if you get first right now, it gives you immediate benefits like access to ad-free content and special subscriber content like deep dives into the lore, player decisions of our campaign on stinkydragonpod.com. It gives you an ad-free podcast RSS feed at stinkydragonpod.com slash RSS. Exclusive Discord events at stinkydragonpod.com slash Discord. Merch discounts at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. And so much more, probably at some sort of stinkydragonpod.com URL. Uh, We also have some exclusive limited merch offerings at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. Right now we have a signed poster from either the Groteth or Infinite campaign that's signed by the cast and crew. We have personalized puppet videos and audio messages from the Infinite and Groteth party members, as well as a first only tote bag. That means you could only get the tote bag if you are a first member. You could also bundle that tote bag with a first membership. So you get two in one. All of this culminates in a super stinky stream on January 26th, where we will be playing a special eight hour D&D adventure live as we make our final push for subscribers and celebrate our stinky show. The more subs we start the stream with, the higher the player's starting level and magic items to attempt and survive a highly lethal dungeon will be. So please subscribe, we need all the help we could get. The show, as we say all the time, would not exist without you guys and your support. And the best way to support the show is by getting a first subscription through stinkydragonpod.com slash first or purchasing a gift sub for your friends at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. We look forward to celebrating Stinkuary with you. Did you know we also have new merchandise in our store, some new stinky merch, but it doesn't actually smell bad, I promise. We have a stinky dragon dice tray. It's beautiful, it's green with some gold lettering, beautiful design, great for your dice rolling needs, as well as a gum gum shirt. Yes, gum gum has his own shirt. Don't let it get to Chris's head, but you should go check it out at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. Wear it well. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. So whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify is great because they're there no matter how big you want to grow, if you're just starting out or if you're huge, they got solutions for you. You don't have to worry about using something that's not suited for you. Hey, Shopify's there to cover you. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash dragon. We had to Paris. You all leave the schoolhouse and you know make your way back to Crew Endormi. 
which one was that kind of abandoned town you passed north of Paris on the way back through? Like I said, it's all abandoned buildings and ruins. A sleepy town? Yeah. Hey, get yourself, give yourself an inspiration dice. I got one. I'm, throwing, I'm just giving uh, away these jokes. Everybody's getting inspiration dice as you say. Good job, guys. As you're walking through Crew Under Me, the hag eye that was given to you by Shivey begins to glow again with green light until it suddenly flashes and blinds everyone. Everyone make an arcana check. This Jeez. thing keeps going off. Is it trying to tell us something? Jesus. That's a one critical fail. Eleven. Twelve. Seven. Just stellar rolls. Thank the you, Elga. Elga have the I know. Thank you, Elga. Check. What I is appreciate going on? You. Our, our barbarian had the highest arcana check. <laughs> the best. It tracks. So, so, Chip, even though you rolled a one, your roll is a five because uh, it's a plus one. Yeah, so, I, I didn't know what the rules are with critical fail. The subreddit yeah, yeah. was yelling at us for 20s and ones. So, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> checks. The checks are independent of that. that. Like critical success or like that's more for like attack rolls. Combat. So for your check, you, you just always give the number because sometimes checks could be incredibly high. Like a check might be a 30. However, right? however, if Chip decides to do a backflip and you roll a one, yeah, Gus will punish you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't have my Nerf gun with me today. All right. So we'll go from lowest to highest. Chip and Mateed, five and seven. Chipmunk. It's difficult to make out, but you, <laughs> Chipmunk, you have, uh, you give a vision while you're blinded. You have vague glimpses of an underground greenish river and caged animals. Okay. Barney and Elga, you all see a hideous green hag, severely Whoa. mangled, and, and it seems to be locked in a cage with animals. Oh, we recognize goodness. it. It was the one that let us go. Is it Shivey? Shivey was green. Yes. Uh, Barney and Elga, you do recognize it as Shivey. Mm. Do we get any feeling like this is currently happening or is it like a... Well, so a Haggai is a, is a real oh, eye-coated and varnished oh. nothing fitted to a pendant. Uh, a hag we can get, freely we're getting a use, vision of this. It's freely it's a, use it's a an action device. to see what the eye sees. Because yeah, it went off seen... before. Yeah. Yes. So it, 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 there's a good chance you could be seeing something as it is. The animals, okay. are they attacking the hag? No. They're in cages. No, they're just hanging. It sounds like she was like yeah. locked up with the animals gotcha. for as like maybe a punishment. If I had to guess. What type of creature are hags? Do we? So yeah, hags are all fey in Groteth. Thank you. So just to, to answer your question. Okay. Good to know. It would appear the hags are preparing to invade Parish. We must make haste to their land, stop them. But be warned, the coven no doubt has spies all throughout the city, so we should tread carefully. So their headquarters is in Parish, or did we just escape their headquarters? You escaped their headquarters, which was that Talon HQ, yeah. which was in Covenord, which was like the northern part of Parish that the coven has taken over. Yeah. Remember, it was like bordered by that river, and you all got there by going through the mausoleum. You were led there. Yeah, thinking about the, they were helping us. Correct. Uh, from that underground passage from the mausoleum. Should we get, get back up? Because we kind of got our butt kicked and you're not well, Lewis no more. I have a question, though. You said that they're the strongest when all three of them are together, but it seems like one of the three is now in jail with animals. Indeed. But all that matters is proximity. Oh. What, roughly how far? Like a Bluetooth connection kind of situation? <laughs> <laughs> it varies, but the closer, the more power. Mm. All right, we just need to get a few walls between them and that hag. Yeah. Well, you have that thing that sends people other dimensions. I do? Well, what an interesting and perfectly placed story device. I How feel like for us. <laughs> we are not nearly as smart to navigate this story and all these little, like, We're abilities. Doing fine. Let us go. <laughs> we, so we need to make our way through Paris. We need to make sure we do not get seen or heard by one of their spies, and then we have to take down some eggs. We're totally fine. We can do this. Are they looking for us by the chance? Oh, I yeah. mean, we escaped them, and we also fought out lots of their aglings. I That's imagine they're they looking for us. And we got, like, oh, aglings. Lewis, aglings. who's probably, like, a, a weapon to them. Mm. While you all are, are, are talking about this, you hear a very faint... Jack. Jack! I forgot to tell you, I got, when you guys left uh, the, uh, the Australian plane, um, I had a, a final goodbye with uh, Jack. And uh, he gifted me a new friend. What? Wait, what did really? this happen? Well, we, do you remember we left the room? Yes. At the oh. end of the podcast when John and Gus had a moment with Mateed. I love that we do that because now I am... <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. What's we'll the have color? To listen. Uh, oh, 
what was the color? Was it a little? God, let's make it orange. Are you kidding me? We have an orange puppet, so let's I don't, do. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. There was an actual description. I'm gonna get it right this time. What was it? It's gray. It's gray. It's gray. Okay. Um, and I and and I did. I think I pronounce mispronounced the French pronunciation of his name, and so I'm gonna try to get it correctly this time. Everyone, I would like you to meet Gigi. 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 Oh, Gigi. Gigi. Oh, Gigi. <laughs> what the perfect cat to be with us in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that was Elga doing a Parisian accent. It was great. Can I can I hey. hold out my hand daintily for Gigi to sniff to see if I pass the vibe test? Uh, yeah, make an animal hand. Come, yeah. on. <laughs> Come on. It's a minus one, but I, I'm feeling it today. Feline it today? <sighs> Eight. I say, Gigi gives it a, a dainty sniff, but doesn't seem too enthusiastic about it. Fair. Maybe it's, it's okay. because you just wipe your butt, Chip. Kinky. <laughs> a cat's <laughs> love is earned. You got you to gotta take time. You got to trust the process, gang. Cats are animals all about consent. That's right. So if your cat hates you, it's probably because you're not, you know, being nice to it. Anyways, go on. Sorry. <laughs> I, yes, I have a little kitty. This is Gigi. I, I, I love him already. Hey, Gigi, I would die for you. <laughs> <laughs> interesting choice of words because the description that was read in the previous module when you all were out of the room was it's a a small ghostly gray kitten Ooh. oh is is wait does g is gg actually incorporea can i check can we make it so because then i feel like it has a little bit of plot armor <laughs> <laughs> no harm will come to this cat yeah it is uh, an incorporeal ghost gray kitten that's awesome it's great yes so uh, he was he just mewing just to just to introduce himself. Yeah, just a, a reminder. Hey, Thank still you. here? I say that's so this is so cute. Welcome to the family. And I turn around and I walk away. And my eyes get really big, and I'm like, I'm surrounded by dead people. All of them are dead. <laughs> I'm the only one alive. Am I dead? What is happening here? That's true. <laughs> Chip is surrounded by well, potentially I'm dead. By death. I dealt death out throughout yeah. my work, and now I am followed by the or dead. Undead. I mean, I'm not dead. I Elga oh, you hears you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she's got good hearing. She's got keen hearing. All right, keep that to yourself. <laughs> I'm very alive. Just have lived for a long time. I mean, what seems like long because I'm a child and time feels like it goes on very long time, you know. Mm -hmm. One year out of ten is a tenth of my life. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we are anyway. going to Paris. <laughs> and we need to be stealthy. Yeah, so y'all are going to have to try to travel stealthily, and we've done this before, like group stealth checks. But before we get to that, how do you all want to try to get back to the talent headquarters in Covenord? Well, how, where, where, how far away is it? Cowabunga. It's not terribly far. You all are, you know, just north of Parish, but you are, for where you are, you are outside the city walls. Where is Covenord located in the, in the Parish greater? It's between you and Parish. It's the nor okay. Covenord is the northern portion of Parish, so you can either go back via the mausoleum like yeah. you did before, or you can go over the wall directly into Covenord from where you are. It's really up to you. Oh, and I think one of you even mentioned about trying to find backup. I, was, I don't know if that's something you want to pursue. Shouldn't we try to rally the troops? I mean, if this place is about to be invaded, surely they'll want to bring some of the. Uh, God, I can't remember what they're called, but the Headless Horseman guys, they had the pumpkin mat patches or whatever. Oh, yeah, um, they were like their enemies, right? Cavalaries, yeah. Oh, we should alert God. them. That's right, his Robert? favorite word. <laughs> you said that right as Micah uh, sent that to me as well in Slack. <laughs> like it was at the exact same moment. Yes, perhaps the Cavalry could be of assistance to us in our dealings with the Coven. Okay. Let's go round up the Cavalry. Here, I'll call them. Help! <laughs> no, what you do, you yell fire if you need help because if people not come if well, you're yelling Well, then help. a bunch of firefighters are going to come our way. I'm already here, all right? I wouldn't, hey, as a volunteer firefighter, I would not call for a false fire. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Well, people just, they want we to come. We can start a fire. No, Marty, no, we don't start <laughs> fires. We put out the fires. We didn't start the fire, am I right, Gustavo? Uh, it was always burning. Gus hates that song. <laughs> Okay, so if we want to find the Cavalry, but Governor is between us and Berish, then we would need to somehow go around, or I guess we might be able to reach it through the mausoleum, right? Right. Because there's what? There's, a, there's an entrance into the mausoleum that we exited out of that brought us out in front of that haggling town. 
Correct. And so we'd have to go back in there, and that could take us through to all the way to Parish. But then wasn't was the Talon headquarters underground through there? So the way that you all got there is when you went to Talon headquarters initially, you went into the mausoleum inside of Parish and then made your way up to Talon headquarters. And then the way you left there was you went back out and then you escaped. You came out of that tree in Covenord and that's when the Haglings attacked you and you fled and climbed over the wall to leave Covenord and then end up here at uh, uh, where you are now. We went over a wall and then we found ourselves in Sleepy Hollow. Okay. Correct. I don't know. How do we find the cavalry at this point in an expeditious manner? Help, dorm. That's up, that's up to you guys. <laughs> and there's not an easy. Well, you're you're, you're outside of Paris. You're outside well, the wall. Let's go to Paris. So that, I just say that because Chip keeps yelling help. You're probably less likely to find them by yelling help here because you're outside the wall. Gang, let's boogie down to Paris. Let's go. Which we'd have to do by going like what around the exterior of the city. Ah, climb the wall. But we climb the wall. We're in Covenord. Good Lord. Okay, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go around the wall and then climb it once we're out of the Covenord part of Parish. Do we shoot? Is that what we could do, Gus? Yeah, you could absolutely do that. Yeah. Okay. Everyone make me a survival check to see to see what you Oh, remember. I'm going to pass this one. <laughs> Same, to see if you survive. 15. 9. 16. 23. Woo! Oh, okay. Everyone except for Matid pretty much remembers this, but... Someone pointed this out last time we did a survival check and I got the lowest one. They thought it was funny that the ghost gets the lowest survival check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a river that kind of cut Parish into two parts. And it was that river that divides Parish, that divides Covenord, I should say, from the rest of that Parish. Bridge. That's when you tried to go across that bridge, correct. That's where you first saw the cavalry and that's what separates Covenord from the rest of Parish. So ostensibly, if you wanted to get back into Parish, you could walk around the wall until you see that river, cross it, you know you're on the Parish side, and then cross the wall into Parish. Cool. That is exactly plan. what I was going to suggest. Got to ford the river. Forward. Nobody get dysentery. All right. It's an Oregon Trail reference. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> One of those internal laps we had. <laughs> bombing yeah. and bombing. I had a, a, a gust of air come out my nose. Uh, <laughs> LOL, 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 LOL. Yeah. Hello, Mayo. You know, so you're, you're, you're essentially northeast of Parish, right? Let's say you're looking at the wall. You're facing southwest looking at the wall where Covenord is. If you want to get, you know, walk around the wall to get back into Parish, you could either go to your right, which is to the west, or go to your left, which is to the east of Parish. Basically, which which direction do you want to climb the wall and we're on the get eastern into Parish side? For, so shortest path is a straight line. So go down to the eastern side of Parish. Okay. For reference, that's how you all first entered Parish when you first got there a couple of episodes. Oh, okay. shot. We go that way. Yeah. Okay. You head, you know, kind of from where you are, kind of southish, and then you know, after, before too long, you you see the river emerging from the walls of Paris, and you know that you've crossed the point where Covenord is on that wall. So, you know, you walk up to the wall again, and once again, you're faced with a 60-foot tall wall with no seeming way to get into it. Help! Help! <laughs> Two heads peek over from the top of the wall, looking down at you all. It's like that Monty uh, Python bit. <laughs> oh. Can we see what the heads are, like who they are? Yeah, you recognize the badges of the Cavalry. Seems to be two members of the Cavalry. Oh, our, our eyesight must be real good to be able to see that from 60, 60 feet, feet down. Yeah. <laughs> 60 feet? Yeah, they're big. Huge emblems. Huge emblems, yeah. I, um, I quickly... Uh, Who goes there? No, I, I quickly stop my team from answering. Oh. We need to be very careful. They said that the coven has ears everywhere, so we do not know if these are Cavalrys that we can trust quite oh. yet. How do we test if they're the cap, cap, capillaries? Are you cavalry or are you coven? <laughs> you have to tell the truth. It's the rules. Zone of truth. I just cast it. Zone of truth. You're in the zone of truth. I don't have zone of truth. I'm glad Matid tried to stop you guys from saying anything, <laughs> and it did nothing. <laughs> so, Gus, what happened? Uh, so... They look at each other confused and then look at you two and look at you, you guys again and says, and I'm sorry, Barbara, you, your, your, your audio kind of clipped. What was the question you asked them? I said, are you Kevin or are you Cavalier? You have to tell the truth. Zone of truth. Zone of truth. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Zone of uh, truth. Make a deception check, Chip. 17. Uh, okay. Yeah, again, they look at each other and say, we are the cavalry. 
guys, I don't have zone truth, so they might be telling the truth. They might be telling a lie, but you know, my instinct says they're telling the truth. Now you answer us. Who are you? I'm Barty. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I can confirm that he is Barney. And you are? I am Elga Von Brath, a little girl who's very innocent and young. It's true. Every word. We are but a group of wayward travelers who were once convicted for murder, but are not the murderers. We are good people. Zone of truth. <laughs> oh, Zone, um, uh, Elga, you, uh, you make me a deception check. You're not young. They don't know that. Yeah, but you got your, that they're going to see if they know or not. 16. 16. All right. That's good. That's good. Mateed has their eyes closed <laughs> and is just focusing on breath and blanking out everything else out and mm. just centering themselves, grounding themselves, mm. and just just being in the moment. That's what Matisse's doing right now. Mm. Ooh, sa. Okay, the two uh, cavalry look down and say, Okay, well, uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, uh, can, we, can we have some of your luck? Their head peeks back over. What do you mean? What brings you to Paris? We're here. We, we, we love the. We are. We are big fans of Parisian cuisine, um, and we've come here to partake and imbibe in your uh, luxuries. Not we murderers. Are, it's, 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 we here. It's to die for. Uh, <laughs> you make a perception check, Matid. Perception. I'm oh, sorry, not perception. Uh, deception. I got my wrong section. I'm rolling it again. I rolled an eight. Matid, zone of truth. Zone of truth. Twenty-one. Oh, okay. Uh, why do you roll again? Do you have lucky? I use my inspiration dice. Oh, it's pretty sure. I got you. Okay. Sorry, I didn't say that. They they do they kind of nod like, hmm, oui, oui. The cuisine is uh, quite good. Okay, you are me and our. Uh, perfect. Ow! That was the plan the entire time. To go, that was exactly from front to back, exactly what we should have done. We did. Yeah, exactly. We're so good at this. Go team. <laughs> Barbara, you did it, like all, like. But I imagine Elga like pops their collar as she's saying that. Just like, yeah, that's, that's right. what I meant. <laughs> it's just a frilly little collar. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The cavalry heads disappear behind the wall again. Okay, we now need to get up the wall. Do you have a rope or anything? <laughs> yes, I do agree. They, do they pop their heads out for a third time, Gus? Yeah, their heads <laughs> pop back out. Can you not just go through the wall? Oh, um, I did. Some of us are corporal, no! some of us are not. Right then, so I will help. They toss a rope over the wall. Perfect. Oh, goodness. But it's the entire rope. It's not tied to anything. <laughs> oh. I, I, I grab it and fly up and tie it to something. Yay! Oh, my Lord, we need to get into this city. <laughs> he just throw the rope at us. <laughs> I mean, that's I exactly what guys. we asked. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet these jokers. I got to give credit to Micah. That was his idea. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Yeah, Matita takes the rope, ties it for you all, and you all are able to uh, heave yourselves up over the wall. Cool. These are, you know, we said about 60 foot tall. So they're pretty thick. How do all of you, except for Matita, make an athletics check just to see uh, how successful you are in this climbing? Okay. Three. Oh. Oh, 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 a one. Oh my gosh. I rolled, 20, 22. I, I rolled a one. Oh my gosh. I also With rolled a plus one. five. Yeah. No. So it's a six. I rolled a one plus two. So three, six, 22. Elga, you just like scamper and fly up that rope like no problem. This was supposed to be just like a gimme roll. I was just like having you roll for the sake of having the roll. Chip and Barney, you two, like, it's like gym class in middle school all over again. You cannot <laughs> get up the rope to save your life. You're just like flailing around, you know, swinging around at the end of the rope, not able to make any progress maybe, up maybe at all. At least maybe. blame Chip, uh, uh, Barney being in, in front of me for why I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> you look up and it's just straight old man on boxers. <laughs> Barney, please, God, why did you put pants on under your tunic? It's <laughs> hard for it gets hot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it does. He's right about that. Bar Barty, Barty, you're slipping. Please, uh, you're getting closer to my face. Barty, no. I'm sorry. P push with your head. Uh, <laughs> push with your head. I have horns, Barty. Oh, okay, I'm climbing faster. 
Bar Barton, you make another athletics check. Let's see if that uh, if that gave you uh, motivation to go. Elga, we, we could just cut the rope. We could just, <laughs> we could, we could we could just, just go on. And you know, it would be a release that we would re immediately feel. In so many ways, Matid. <laughs> 19. <laughs> Mental, physical, yes, emotional. Emotional is just quite a taxing. Chip's horns give a little poke to Barney's butt, and uh, he realizes he's in danger and uh, quickly begins scampering up the, the rope and makes it to the top, clearing the way for Chip to make another attempt All at right. it. All right. Ah, 21. Yeah, now with the old man out of the way, you're able to easily climb up to the top of the wall and rejoin all your friends. I, 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 Barney wants to mend his underwear. <laughs> oh, okay. You've got mending, right? Yeah. 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 I got two holes right. in it. Those were some holy underpants. I saw more than I cared to share with the class. <laughs> All right, so y'all are over the wall and you've re-entered Parish on the eastern side. I think Barney and Chip's pairing should now just be called holy pants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so what's the plan at this point? We have to go talk to uh, the Cavalry, try to convince them to come with us, There's huh? There's two dudes right there that I guess we could talk to. Are they still there or did they walk off? Yeah. Oh, they're still there. They're loving watching you guys. <laughs> Hello, friends. It's, I know we look a lot more intimidating up here than we did down there, probably, because we're a lot bigger up close. <laughs> but you do not have to be afraid. You are quite petite, so... Okay, well, there's no need for that. <laughs> Anyways. I, I pick up Elga and put Elga right face to face to them. <laughs> anyway, we need the, your help. <laughs> so, That's what we're here for. Excellent. We've helped you so much already. That is very true. So. What restaurant would you recommend? <laughs> no, Barty, Barty, Barty. <laughs> oh, I thought we were getting food. We are getting food. We are getting food. We are. We they start reclaiming their rope and putting it back Listen, up. The, the, we've uncovered a plot against Parrish by the coven, all right? They have your leader. They have the headless horseman, and, and they might be approaching and trying to uh, take over the rest of the city. So, like, this is like, you know, danger, danger. Set all alarms. Bad stuff is happening. We need your help. But not fire. No fire, though. Not yet. Hey, Gus. Yeah. I want to say this before you respond. While they're saying all of this, I'd like Mati to ready an attack. Oh, smart. In case what? In case they do something that we don't want them to do. In, ca in case gotcha. they're coming. If they do something suspicious, we'll say. That's a good word for it. Suspicious or hostile. Are you going to kick him off the wall? This we'll see. is Parrish! <laughs> <laughs> The coven will never advance as long as we stand guard. Okay, once That's again, what we're hoping. Your leader is gone. They have him. So, like, you're, you know, not full force. And, and also he could like influence you, you know, like he's like your leader and you see him, you're like, oh, that's our, that's our dude. But, you know, he could be under their mind control. Listen, it's bad stuff, bad juju. Make a persuasion I check. I was hoping Chip. you'd say that. I have plus 10. Oh, wow. wow. It's an 18 plus 10, 28. Yeah, they seem 28. Wow. Yeah, they seem uh, very concerned uh, about what you said. One of them asks, what do you mean exactly by they have our leader? How do you know that? What did you see? Okay, so... Matid, take it away because well, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> nope, nope, oh, God. nope. <laughs> Gee whiz. Okay, so... All right, do you remember a couple of days ago when there was an ice dude who had captured a lady and then your boss was there and he like saved the day, right? That was super cool, super heroic. Okay, yeah? Ah, uh, we oui, outside the Toma Tavern. That's right, the one without the door that you have to go through the window. Uh, okay, so. It, it was also like uh, hours ago, by the way. It wasn't a couple days ago, it's very recent. Right, so uh, that lady happened to be a hag in disguise, all right? No. So then they seduced yes. the uh, headless horseman and they were like, you know, smooching and stuff like that. Well, we like followed them to an outside location and bada bing, bada boom, it's a hag. They reveal themselves and then they were mind controlling the headless horseman. How so? Uh, they had we like don't a, know. They had a head. There was like a head. Oh, yes, oh, that's mm. it. This head. <laughs> Wee, oui, that sounds very troubling. Big trouble. Where did you say they are? Where can we find them? Well, 
I'm afraid of. We are something. guessing that they are probably in Covenord. Yeah, at, uh, Covenord. You know, at their headquarters in there. Yeah. Can you lead us there? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yes. This sounds like this requires the cavalry's full response. Yes, we should send yes, the entire agree, squad of six riders with you to crush yes. their efforts. I cast Visage of the Astral Self, and I check on the inside of what they just said. With yeah, advantage. I want to roll for vibe check. I don't, this feels like they're like, oh yeah, just take us. Yeah, no, cool. So Visage of the Astral Self gives you wisdom of the spirit, which gives you advantage there on insight checks. Yes, which is what I want to do. Okay, so yeah, then make an insight check with advantage. Yes. Roll for vibe check. And then after that, yeah, we'll do vibe check with Chip Nat as well. 20, 26. Yee! All right, nice. Uh, what do we get a vibe check from you as well? Okay, Chip? what am I doing? Perception? <laughs> Insight. Insight, that's the one. <laughs> 15. If, if Pee Wee Herman was here, we'd be going, ah, he said the word. <laughs> <laughs> he said the word. <laughs> do the line, Bart. <laughs> Mateed's like, it's like the mask appears over their face. It just kind of like pops down. Yeah. You know, the, the two cavalry look at you a little quizzically. But both of you think that they're being sincere with their concern and their offer to send assistance with okay. you. So there's a sarcophagus. This is the sarcophagus. What was this place called? Mausoleum. There's a mausoleum with a secret entrance underneath. We found this because we were also hoodwinked into helping a hag, but we got in a fight with them and escaped. So I'm just like laying it all out there. I really hope you guys are on our side because like this is bad juju. Bad stuff's about to happen. We're trying to help Parrish. We want to save Parrish. And our friend, the Headless Horseman. Yeah, your leader. You know, you all know that Parrish in general is at strong contention with the Coven. And, you know, you think that they would be very concerned about this kind of very specific intel. And these two, you know, Cavalry say, We shall head to the Mazenim you, and you can show us how to get there. Okay. Yes. Should we get back up? We will have the squad of riders join us. Okay. So that's Excellent. eight all together, or are you part of the squad? We are a part of the squad, so four in addition to us, six total. Are you tough dudes? They flex a little bit and like, Oui. <laughs> Oriana over here has been known to work out every now and then. Okay. okay. I can see. Oriana, what's your name? What's your name, fella? Ah, uh, yes. Je m'appelle Sergeant Liazard. Ah, oh, Liazard. That over there is Lieutenant Oriana. Oriana, Lieutenant. Okay. Oh, salute. <laughs> Not like the drinking kind, like a little, like, you know, like military. Like We're not military. This isn't like a stolen valor thing. All right, let's just go. Let's go to the mausoleum. You would uh, actually salute is a way to say hi in French. That's what I meant the whole time. <laughs> I think he means salud, salud, which is health, which is also a toast in Spanish. There you go. We're so cultured here. We're so cultured that we can't keep track of them. Yeah. yeah. As we do all of our non-offensive accents, <laughs> not offending anyone who actually speaks with that accent. Duolingo, hit us up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Please, we need money. Ooh, could the owl be a big bad at one point? <laughs> the Duolingo owl. Ooh. I guess we go ahead and head to the mausoleum. So I was going to have you all do stealth checks to try to remain undetected, but, you know, if you found... Yeah, at this point, you found Cavalry instead, and essentially they're going to escort you. So I wouldn't, you, you aren't going to obviously have to make those stealth checks to try to move stealthily through the city. I still can if you want. I have advantage. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. fine. So you all re enter the mausoleum. You know, it's a white alabaster building with column porticos and floating stone sign that reads Mausoleum Milieu. And just like before, there's a set of stairs that lead underground into a tomb. Why doesn't everyone make me a survival check to see if y'all remember how you actually went through here? 18. I rolled a, I rolled a 1, 4, 13, 21. <laughs> I actually remember that episode, but I don't. Now I don't. Well, you could just phase through things if you really wanted to. <laughs> I guess. It's like falling uh, Three of you rolled pretty well. And, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so. I still keep, I still keep failing on all the survival checks. What is going on? Uh, also, if we need the legitimacy, we have those deputy badges from Weiser. Weezer. I don't think he deputy. Yeah, that's more of a. Yeah, he didn't deputize. more of an after city thing. Yeah. yeah, but you know, it's yeah. like we're, you know, like, hey, you know, we're also kind of, uh, you know, you, you know. In enforcement officers. Yeah. Well, wait, what What are their badges? They're, they're headless horsemen. They're horsemen. They're pumpkin heads. They were like a, yeah. a, a horseshoe. Right. On a pumpkin. On a pumpkin. Okay. Can we get ones that have like a little gourd 
and we're like trainees, you know, like little badges, little, little cute little badges. I'm just collecting badges, you know. No, he's he's a, he's a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> Chip, <laughs> make me a wisdom check. Uh oh. Uh, hmm. That's a zero. <laughs> I drool. Yeah. Um. No. There's a. This it must be impossible to get something like that. Okay. Oh, what what could have been? <laughs> Blaze just sitting there with his mouth open. <laughs> what could have been. All right, so you all uh, are able to remember your way through the the mausoleum to get there the way that you were led before. You took a bunch of the wrong turns, so I, we just had to c- correct guiding them. Yeah, <laughs> keep just pulling them back and guiding them along the way. So once again, just like before, you enter Talon headquarters from the southern portion. And as you all are arriving, pulling into this area that you know as being Talon headquarters, you see that the coven is sending out what appears to be a horde of haglings via secret tunnels, the secret tunnels that you just came through. Secret tunnels! Heading back towards them is the the mausoleum. While all this is going on, we'll say each of you can take a turn to do whatever you want. Let's call it like a surprise round to get ready, whether it's an action, bonus action, movement, scouting ahead, getting a position, whatever you want. You said that there's a horde coming. Like, is it from one, they're all entering from one spot, and is it like from that one tunnel? Don't know if that accurately describes what Gus described. You all emerged from that tunnel that you entered from the mausoleum, and as you enter, like you're kind of hiding to survey the room, a horde of haglings leaves this big room you're in back out through the tunnel you just came from, like they're heading into Parish now. And we're trying to stop them, like ambush them. That's up to you. Everyone can take a turn. You, You all tell me. How do they not see us if we came out of the tunnel that they're not going into? That's a very dark cavern. Remember, it's not mm-hmm. above ground. You all are underground. And honestly, they might. I'm going to make some rolls here in a bit. Okay. So this is your chance to either hide or, you know, figure out what it is that you're going to do. You all just kind of have, like, first jump here. Quick meta talk. If i wearing my cloak of displacement, can I also be wearing a robe of serpents, or is it one or the other? It's one or the other. Copy. Okay. I'm going to go into hiding and just uh, at, at a advantageous spot. Actually, do I see any of the, 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 main, the leaders? Do I spot any senior hags. hags? Why don't you make me a perception check from here? My favorite. 11. Yeah, so you, you know, look out back into this room and you see two of the hags in the center of the room close to that that water and that river that runs through the, the middle of the, the, the headquarters. I'm just going to move forward and, and go into hiding. Okay, make a... Stealth check. Okay, this is that advantage. That's a 21 and a 21. Pretty good. All right, who else wants to go? How many is the horde, like, number-wise? Are we trying to fight them? It's a lot. Well, that's up to you. Are we trying to fight them? I don't know. Because maybe the cavalry will come just at the right time and help fight them with us. Who knows? Yeah, they're they're, they're also trying to uh, stealthily take positions up. It looks like maybe they're trying to, you know, they're they're kind of coordinating, trying to figure out how to encapsulate as many as possible in here. I imagine we don't want them going through this tunnel. Is there like a 10 foot radius spot that would stop them that they would have to go through in order to enter the city? Uh, a, a choke point? Yeah. It doesn't quite get that thin. It doesn't get all the way down to 10 feet. I would say at its tightest, it probably gets down to 15 17 feet, somewhere in that area. Let's create a choke cho- point. I have a, a magic circle. I create a 10-foot radius, 20-foot tall cylinder, magical energy, centered on a point on the ground that you see, and then I can choose one or more of the following types of creatures. I can choose uh, Fey, and it affects those creatures. They can't willingly enter the cylinder by non-magical means. If the creature tries to use teleportation to enter, they have to make a charisma saving throw and they have disadvantage on attack rolls against targets within the cylinder. Targets within the cylinder can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. And when you cast a spell, you can elect to cause its magic to operate in the reverse direction, preventing a creature of the specified type from leaving the cylinder. Cool. So mm. I could either capture a bunch of them in the cylinder or create like a, 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 a barrier where we can fight from. Yeah, that's super useful. Did you describe a choke point that was 15 feet, Gus? Yes, it's about 15 feet is the most narrow it gets to. Maybe place it in the center, and then we have two people on either side. 
or I could also cut off a bunch of them and split them up. Like the two that were the two that were trying to split them up, I could cast the, oh, the spell and keep them from leaving. Before they it. can, yeah. I, I would say, yeah. If that's the case, like have that at the ready. But if we deploy it now, it well, it's might... a one minute cast, so I need to like do it. Oh, mm, you're cool. So I need to like do it before we go in. Okay, can I do that, Gus? Where I split like the hags, the the two that are bad into different They're groups. All bad. Well, you know, the two leaders. So, the two hags. I'll tell you what, why don't you, Barney, you haven't rolled me one. Why don't you make me a perception check? Nat 20. Before I get to that, just so we were all on the same page about the spell, you know, I, I see you have all the components for that spell. You would have to make sure you remove some, the ones that it says from your inventory. Okay. That is a very powerful spell, as you can tell. So that's why it takes time to cast, and it also has material components that are a little costly. So just to kind of keep it in check, if you ca- if you do end up casting it, make sure you remove the necessary items from your inventory. Okay. So, yes, you can totally do that and, you know, kind of create this choke point where you all just came through to stop these haglings. However, on top of that, there are the two hags in the room, which there's about five feet between them. If you wanted to, you could try to separate them, like put one inside the circle and the other one not in the circle. In front of them, kind of in the middle of the room, is the Headless Horseman, who's looking at the hags as well. Off to the east is a cage filled with animals (gasps) and Shivy the hag. Shivy! Out to the west is like a pile of magical oddities. And then out to the southeast appears to be a pile of corpses. And then walking around as well, besides the the horde of haglings, there's also various groups of darklings wandering around, seeming to be getting ready for some type of battle. This is real boss ba- battle energy. Right, and I say all this because you rolled a really good perception check, and I don't want you to think these haglings are the only thing mm-hmm. in here that you're facing. Gotcha. The whole army. Hey, uh, I think that they should probably send back for more of the, the cavalry. <laughs> I don't think six or eight <laughs> dudes is going to do it. The horde, how, how, how spatially, how much space are they taking up? Like, if I was to do that 10-foot radius, how many, how, what percentage of them would it encapsulate? The horde of haglings? Yeah. So there's quite a few of them with a 10, it was a 10-foot diameter circle? 10-foot radius, so I guess that would make Oh, that's even bigger. 20, that'd make 20 yeah, feet, so I 20 guess foot. they could, yeah. You could probably get the majority of the horde of haglings in that. Can I have, uh, I just kind of generally said, can I hide? Can I make movement towards Shivy and, and also still be hidden? Like, like max out my movement without being detected? Sure, absolutely. You rolled so well, absolutely. Cool. I have something that I want to do, but I want to give Barbara an opportunity as well. Yeah, well, I want to fit, we also got to finish up with Barney. I don't okay. know if he's going to cast that or not. Yeah, I, I'm going to cast it. I'm just trying to, with the group, like, is it better? Do you don't think it's better to, to trap off all the, all the bad ones and we could just like group boom, boom, boom from afar or separate the, the two bosses, the two hags. I'm assuming that that Matid is going to do that interdimensional thing to separate. I'm going to try to get Shivy out of the cage so that they could potentially run away or help us in the battle. So maybe we coordinate with Matid to see which I have one. A, I, have a, I have a way to get Shivy away, but if you don't want me to do that, I can do something else. I mean, it's totally your call. I'm just saying if we're going to, if the goal is to separate them, Maybe Barney focuses on capturing one and then Matid try to teleport the other. I don't know. Or capturing all the big hordes so we don't have to fight them and we just deal with the bosses. Yeah, that's that, 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 that works for me. I would say that I would lean towards, yeah, you would want to start casting that, like getting the jump. Because right. I, I think that this is like a tenuous lead on this whole thing. I don't think we're going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm curious right. what Elga and Matid are going to get into. Could I? I don't know what this necessarily does. I've never. I don't think I've ever ready to spell before. But could I ready the cone of cold spell? Cone of cold. You get that from Fang from Frost. From Fang Frost. Yeah. Casting time. What? what well, like, what do you have in mind? I was just gonna target a bunch of the uh, haglings. It's a sixty-foot cone, and they have to make a Constitution saving throw. Otherwise, they take eight d8 of cold damage. Burr. So what would you wait for, like for them to get close right up on you and then you cast it or what's your plan here? Yeah, just to kind of see like the majority of them group up in a, to like really make the most of that 60 foot cone. Sure. So you're going to kind of position yourself and wait for them to get closer and then spring it on them. Yeah. Tell you what, so it sounds like you're going to want to be hiding to do that. So why don't you make me a stealth check to see if you can try to make sure they get as close as possible before you spring it on. Nice weapon. It's a beautiful, beautiful dagger you got there. (laughs) 
I don't hear anything. Chip is still hiding. That nice knife. That <laughs> beautiful knife. Wow. That's an 11. All right. Uh, is that it for you, Elka? Am I also allowed to rage now? If you want to. Uh, I'll just hold on. But don't forget, yeah, if you don't attack or take damage yeah. within the next round, it goes away. Okay, I'll hold on. But yes, that's it for Elga. Okay, Matid? How far is Shivy from me? From where you all entered, Shivy's kind of on the farthest east wall. I'm going to do some quick counting. We're facing north, right? Yeah. I'd say roughly 100, 120 feet, something like that. Okay. And your movement speed is, that's the distance you can go in one turn, which is... Correct. Six seconds, 10 seconds? Six seconds. Six seconds. Okay. I want to incorporeal move into the ground and then head towards Shivy. Okay. So would then, since you're giving us this opportunity to take a uh, turn, basically, I can go my distance to Shivy. Yeah? Yeah. So you would like, are you talking about like double move? Yeah, I guess. Let's say yes, I'm asking that. Yeah. Okay. You could totally do that. Then I can get all the way underneath Shivy. Okay. Great. Okay. So to recap, or you just say something? I was gonna say, I'm going to double move if that's the case. So that's 80 feet plus I'm going to do the hide, which I, uh, what God, what is that called? Uh, Cutting action. action? Yeah. Where, where are you moving to? I was also going to move towards Shivy, just kind of in that general back area. I want to get the jump on him. I want to like go around as much as I can. Okay. So if Matid ends their turn inside an object or creature, they take 1d10 force damage. Ooh. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Should I just roll? Roll it. Four. I take four damage. No, that's, not, that's not terrible. Okay, so to recap, Chip double moves while hiding, trying to close the distance to Shivy. He gets most of the way there with 80 feet. Barney is starting to cast that spell. We can say it goes off here pretty quick, right? Since you since already started casting it. And you were casting it to create the choke point, right? Not to split the hags? I should probably split the hags, right? I'll split I the need hags. A, I need a decision. I'll, I'll split the hags. I'll split the hags and okay. get as many of the other hags in, as possible, like trying Haglings. to split haglings in, in there as possible. So the haglings are nowhere near the hags okay, currently. Okay. Well, then I'll just split yeah. the hags. So you want to cast it basically on one hag without the other one, right? So yeah. that they're... We can find okay. them separate. And then Elga is kind of hiding, waiting for the haglings to get closer to use Kona Cold on them. Yes. And Matid is underground, under Shivy, and their turn there. Taking four damage. <laughs> Let's go, ooh! <laughs> You just hear a muffled. <laughs> 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 oh, As you are uh, sneaking over, Chip, the hag eye in your possession suddenly glows with a green light, and you hear a shriek of laughter bellow from the purple and blue hags. The green hag cries out from the nearby cage. Chip! Shirak and Skitch begin chanting. We can't see you. <laughs> You've got a beacon in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Shirak and Skitch join hands and their feeble figures rise into the air. Shivy's cage also rises into the air behind them. <sighs> On each of their foreheads, a third green eye appears. Oh! One claw! Three talents! Our coven united! Three hags! One sisterhood! Our powers ignited! All three hags erupt with sickly green flames and a shockwave booms throughout the cavern. For the first time since you've seen them, all three hags no longer appear as decrepit old crones, but instead a trio of fearsome and formidable witches. Everyone roll initiative. Oh my god. Purple skin, two horns, ten fingers, two middle 21. fingers, one tail. Five. <laughs> five. We can see you. <laughs> I just love that. Nineteen. <laughs> uh, Twenty-one as well. All right. So when we come back next week, we're going to ah! have Elgin Barney leading us off with Chip uh, and then Matid. And we'll see what happens in the next week, <laughs> in next week's episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Oh, God, so much to remember. I want to fight. This is bad. This is bad. Matid just has to hang out underground for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Tito, Tito be gone forever. I'm going to re-roll a new character when we come back. Yeah. But Teed comes back up out of the ground. <laughs> we have a, a gum gum shirt that just came out. Oh, yeah. When this episode comes out, the gum gum shirt will have just come out, uh, as well as our dice tray. So go check this out. Uh, maybe make a purchase here to help us finish out uh, our push in Stinkuary that we're going through right now. Yeah. Gum gum shirt looks awesome. Looks like a like a 80s, like, I don't Looks know. Like, like a Led Zeppelin album cover or something. It's real groovy. Very classic yeah. D&D. Go check it out for yourself at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. It looks great. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Say goodbye, John. Au revoir. <laughs> Hey guys, did you know that you could directly support the show by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first? We've got some amazing little sinkers this week we want to shout out who are supporting the show, starting with Computator Jones, love the name. We got Vincent Shadow, Voodoo Sock Monkey. Oh, these are all great names. I love them. The Vati Ken, the Vatican. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Sometimes I figure things out as I'm reading them. Then we have Dula Chan. Love it. Thank you guys so much. You guys are directly supporting the show and you get more great content like Second Wind. You get to interact with us on our subscriber only Discord channels and we have events and so much more. Again, that's stinkydragonpod.com slash first. We cannot thank you enough for supporting the show and for allowing us to make the show because that is what you do. Listeners that interacted with us this week on social media and Discord had NPCs named after them on this episode. We had Sergeant Leazard the Cavalry Rider, named after at laser underscore lizard on Twitter, who is voiced by Micah Reisinger, at Micah Reisinger. We also have Lieutenant Oriana the Cavalry Rider, who is named after at Keruali or Caro on first. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm usually terrible at it, so I'm uh, parring the course. We also have Shivy the Green Hag, named after user Shivivi, Shivivi, Shivivi? I never get that right on Reddit. Voiced by the wonderful Laurel Rothamel at Laurel Rothamel on social media. We have Skitch the Blue Hag, who's named after at Jessica Sketches on Instagram, voiced by also the wonderful Jessica Vasami at Jessica Vasami on social media. And lastly, we have Shirak the Purple Hag, named after Just Shirakumo on Twitter, voiced by Murphy Geshwind. Thank you, Murphy, who is at Sunny Shore City. Additionally, The Alchemist, voiced by Blizzbear, at Blizzbear. We love you. The Stinky Dragon channel is managed by Ben Ernst. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Kai Cook, written, edited, composed by Micah Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sonier. Head over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first for all things stinky and tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. That's funny. My Google search. Expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I've never played. Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> no, I think I, there's a video. Was yeah, oh, my, my blue eyes. eyes. Yeah, my blue my eyes. eyes. <laughs> it's like there's an RTAA yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might be the only Yu-Gi-Oh card I know. Still cracks me up.